Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So today I have a very quick video for you and this is all about bow control. Now there are lots and lots of different um, techniques and exercises and things that you can do to help with bow control. But this is just one little exercise that I used to do way back in the day when I was starting violin. Um, I probably haven't done this exercise for probably about a good 20 years. So we're gonna see how that plays out today. But this is something that I used to do when I was younger to try and help the flexibility of my fingers. So this is twofold in a way. So it's gonna help the, the flexibility of my left hand fingers, especially when I'm trying to work on faster passages and get those faster passages faster or at the speed that I want to get them at, but also um, bow control as well. So this exercise is mainly for bow control. So I want to kind of focus on that, but as a kind of, um, as, a, as a bonus, it's going to be a quite a good warm up for the fingers as well. So this is probably an exercise that you can start with before you do any, um, you know, in, in any of your regular practicing scales, you know, whatever it is that you do. So bow control is going to be um, how you control your up bows and down bows, essentially. So it's working out how many notes you need to play to get from one end of the bow to the other end of the bow. So before, perhaps before I go into the exercise, actually a good secondary exercise that you can do is to see how long you can hold a bow for. So what I mean by that is that you're gonna start as a down bow or you're gonna start at the heel of the bow, draw the bow down, but see how long you can actually keep that bow going down for. So you want to, you know, it might take you 15 seconds, 20 seconds. So you would start your timer and then start playing a down bow. So I have no idea how long that uh, that would have taken. I guess I'll find out when I edit this video and I'll see by the timings when I'm editing. But that's what I mean by that. And you'd wanna do that a few times up as well, down, keep going up, keep going down and see if you can increase that. But the point of that is to make sure that you're not sort of, you know, you, you don't wanna be doing that. You wanna keep that bow. You want to keep that bow sound nice, um, uh, as as clear um, and as smooth as possible. So you you know you don't want to be stopping. You don't want to be doing that. You want to continuously draw the bow down as slow as you can possibly draw the bow down, whilst still keeping that bow nice and smooth. You'll hear it. You'll you'll hear it kind of. You'll you'll be able to hear the sound go. Da you'll be able to hear it kind of oscillate, the sound kind of oscillating, so to speak, as it's kind of, as it's not staying completely kind of stable. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, don't worry about that too much. That, that The point of this is that we're not trying to create a nice clear tone as such. We're trying to work on the bow arm and the bow control, and the better you get at that, the better you're gonna be. It's quite difficult to do when you're at the heels, so you'll probably find it'll take you two or three attempts to, uh, to, to, to get the heel to start really nice without the heel of the bow sounding. <laughs> you know, like that. Uh, it's easier to start up. But when you're moving the bow up, you'll probably be tempted to start off really fast. And then when you get to about here, you'll think, ah, better slow the bow down. So remember, it's a lot harder when you get up to the heel of the bow to control the bow. But when you're at the point of the bow, it's a lot harder to actually control the speed and slow it down because the upward movement is much easier. So therefore you kind of want to go a little bit faster. So again, I don't know how long this is going to take me. Perhaps I'll find out in the video and put a timer up when I'm editing.
So there you go. So something like that. So that's a good exercise to practice. Now that leads us nicely onto the original exercise I wanted to talk about in this video. And this is kind of similar. So again, as I said, it's going to be for the flexibility of the fingers. So it's quite good, you know, to sort of give them a bit of a, a bit of a warm up, but also for the bow as well. So what we want to do is we want to play eight notes per down bow, eight notes per up bow. And all I'm gonna do is just play an open A, a B, a C, a D, an E, and then going back down, D, C, B, A. That's all I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna do that on the A string just for today. Now with this, what I want to do is make sure that by the time I get to the end of those eight notes, I'm either at the heel or I'm at the point of the bow. So if I'm starting at the heel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By the time I get to my end note of the open A again, I want to be down at the point. And again, I want to be at the heel. You don't have to be right on the heel, but you know, the heel of the bow, pretty much, you know, where, where your index finger is, because we don't really bow at that kind of last inch, inch and a half, so to speak, just because we don't use that part of the bow. So with those eight notes, you want to make sure that you play all of those eight notes in about the same kind of time that I'm playing it at, because we're gonna be getting a lot faster in a minute. So you don't wanna be going because when we're doubling that to 16 and, and six, get to 64, for example, then you're gonna find that too fast to do. So eight notes to a bow. Then we're gonna do 16. Now this is also about trying to get those 16 notes all in the space of these length bows here. And this is about bow placement, if, if you like. So how fast do I have to bow to get all of those notes in? So we don't wanna be going. And we've only got to halfway, you know? So you're gonna to have to bow a little bit quicker. So. The other thing that you want to be careful of as well is that when you're doing this, that you're not getting to about halfway, realizing you've got a few notes left and then yanking the bow the end of the way round. What we want to do is make sure that that bow is moving consistently. And that's the hard part, trying to get that speed consistent so that we don't find that we are having to speed up to the end because we've, we've, we've misjudged the bow or we've gone too fast and we haven't got enough bow. So what you might wanna do is practice the first one and get a feel for that. You know, Don't move on until you can take that from the point to the heel, to the point to the heel perfectly. Then we're gonna double that. then we're gonna double that. Like that. Now, when you get to 64, that is a lot harder to do and you are gonna find it a lot harder to get the, the tone quality with the bow, but you know, that that's fine. Just keep working on that and the more flexible your left hand gets with, with moving, the better you are gonna be with that bow. But I would probably say when I'm playing this, I am concentrating more on the bow than I am with my fingers. So I have purposefully made it so that I'm not doing anything over complicated with my fingers because I don't want to be have to splitting my brain in half. I don't wanna to have to think about what I'm doing on the fingers and I don't wanna to have to think about what I'm doing on, on the bow because I'm trying to concentrate on the bow. This is a bow exercise, not really a finger kind of exercise where I'm having to play some, some really kind of tricky notes in here. So 
if you're getting a bit bored with just doing that scale, you know, change it. Whatever you want to change that to, that's absolutely fine. So there we go, I hope that exercise has, has helped you. Let me know how you get on with that if you try that in, in the comments below. But I hope that is going to help you a little bit more with the bow and you'll find that as you're using the bow in pieces, especially more um, longer phrased out pieces and maybe slower pieces, you'll find that your, uh, your, your bow placement will be a lot better. You'll be able to phrase the notes a lot better and move within those different phrases a lot better because you'll be using more of the bow in the right areas at the, of the bow at the right time as well, if that makes sense. But also helping the left hand become a little bit more flexible as well. And don't forget, you can apply that to fast passages. If you've got fast passages, you can break those little fast passages down and do it with the whole bow thing as we've just done, where we do eight to the bow, 16 to the bow, 32 to the bow, 64 to the bow, and that kind of thing. So I hope that has helped you. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.